I'm here with uh, Max Bozov uh, from SpaceX. Uh, Max, could you tell us about your role at the company? What you're doing here? Sure, I am Senior Mission Manager and the Product Manager of the Dragon spacecraft at SpaceX. Okay, and uh, congratulations on the, uh, the fourth uh, Falcon launch. Thank you. Uh, you must have heard that a hundred times this week, I should think. A lot of people are very excited about it, uh, inside and outside SpaceX. Yeah. And uh, very pleased to see you here at the, uh, at the IAC as well, you've come all the way from America. Is this an, an important part of your, of your job or SpaceX's role, do you think? Um, certainly conferences are a regular part. Um, we have a lot to talk about and we have a lot, to, uh, a lot of information to make sure it gets out to the space and uh, astronomical community. Mm. I, I think uh, all credit to you on that front. Your, your website is always uh, a source of loads of information and, and uh, your webcasting, the launches and this sort of thing. Which is great. Yeah, we try to be very forthcoming, as, as forthcoming as we are allowed to be. Um, can I ask you that you've, you've now achieved this one huge milestone of, of successfully launching a Falcon 1. What's the next milestone for SpaceX? Well, the big upcoming milestones are the next launch of the Falcon 1, which will be early in 2009. Um, for a, a commercial customer. Yeah. Uh, the first Falcon 9 vehicle, which is the, the big one, that's uh, 20 times the payload capacity of the Falcon 1, and that will be at our launch pad at Cape Canaveral before the end of this year. And then first launch will be uh, early next year, 2009. And then the first launch of the Dragon spacecraft, which we're building uh, under sponsorship from NASA to provide cargo services to and from the space station will be in June next year as well. Yeah. Yeah. And is the Falcon 9 launch uh, a demonstration launch or will it have a payload on board? The first Falcon 9 is a demonstration. Can you talk us through some of the other customers? I know you've, you've already pre-sold a, a lot of your flights. We have uh, 10 more customers on contract, on manifest. Um, they are spread fairly evenly between government and commercial, and uh, US and international. So they tend to be commercial sort of launches or, or research type sure, positions? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, a, it's a spread between them. There's, um, for Falcon 1, obviously, there's small payloads. Uh, we have uh, both commercial and international customers for that. Yeah, yeah. Falcon 9, there's a lot of interest from the US government and also international as well. And uh, SpaceX is the uh, recommended partner, I think, for um, the Google Lunar X Prize for launches. Uh, have you had a lot of interest from teams? Uh, we've had inquiries, I think, from all the registered teams. Oh, okay. And uh, are any at a point where they're sort of signing up or trying to schedule a launch with you? Um, there are none on contract yet, but they are. We are obviously the hot favourite because we are by far the cheapest option for a mission in that mass class. And uh, I understand you're giving a presentation later. Can you take us through what you're going to be talking about? Uh, I'll be covering all three of the primary um, SpaceX products, the Falcon 1, Falcon 9 and Dragon spacecraft, uh, and also a new, a new application of the Dragon spacecraft that we are releasing under the name of Dragon Lab. That will be a free-flying version of the Dragon spacecraft that can host payloads in space for up to two years. And uh, in the pressure vessel, they can provide recovery of those payloads as well. So there's a lot of interest from uh, the research community for opportunities to fly in space. Maybe they were manifested on shuttle, but now they can't get on the manifest in the few remaining flights. Uh, or maybe it's just a lot quicker and uh, less expensive for them to fly with us than to fly with uh, NASA or any other space agency. So that's what I'll be talking about this afternoon. Um, if you could uh, forecast forward, say, five years, where do you think you'd be? How many, how many missions would you have going off? Five years is a long time, but certainly uh, we hope to be providing regular cargo services to the space station. Uh, that's being competed right now by NASA, that contract, and uh, will be announced in November. Um, we money? would hope to be operational with that within two years right now and uh, that would be a major customer, a major contract. Uh, certainly we are looking at increasing flight rates for the Falcon 9, uh, 12 to 20 missions per year, which is unprecedented, but then so, are our, so is our price point performance. Uh, and then Falcon 1 will continue to be there, and the Falcon 1E, &E, uh, which is an enhanced version of the Falcon 1, increases the payload capacity by more than 50%. Uh, we'll be flying. Uh, that's really within two years. A lot of that stuff is within two years. Speaking five years out, I, uh, I can hardly speculate, but it's, uh, it's just going to get bigger. We have plans for even bigger vehicles beyond the Falcon 9. 
you you have a mission booked to launch uh, Bigelow's is it the BA three thirty? Yeah. Uh, there is uh, two thirds scale. Um, yes, he's on contract in two thousand and eleven flight. Okay. So it may be that you're. Uh, but it's established you may be providing services to ferry cargo and or... That's right. Humans. Bigelow is potentially also a huge customer for us and there's a lot of synergy between uh, what he's doing and what we're doing. Uh, yeah. So we are in uh, regular contact with them and uh, yeah. hope to be doing a lot of business in the future. Uh, I know when, uh, when Elon Musk first launched the company, one of his sort of stated goals was to eventually provide services to transport humans to Mars. And is that still the focus of the company? Or the it, it, it is very much. Um, it was started by Elon because he is some, somewhat passionate about uh, space exploration and expanding humanity's presence beyond Earth. And that really undergirds everything that SpaceX does. The Falcon 1 is a test vehicle for the Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 is designed oh, well, to be integrated from the start. The yeah. Dragon spacecraft is providing cargo to station, but we fully intend to fly people on it. And it's been designed with that in mind. It really requires very little upgrade to fly crew. Um, so everything that we're doing is... Uh, Oh, it's geared toward human transportation and human exploration. And so, uh, yes, looking forward, we definitely intend to be flying people on Dragon, on the Falcon 9. Uh, we will be building landers, and uh, the moon is a potential like, um, destination, but uh, in many ways is less interesting to colonize than a place like Mars. So I can definitely see that in SpaceX's future. You know, if I had to put you on the spot and ask you to speculate about timescales for these sorts of things, what, what would you say? Well, it's, uh, it's usually about funding, and uh, we have um, proposals for logistics landers for the moon that could be operating uh, within three years of funding being turned on by NASA. Uh, of course, if NASA decides not to do it, there's a good chance SpaceX will do it anyway. Maybe not in the same time frame. But uh, certainly we could be, uh, middle of next decade, we could be landing on the moon. And uh, that would not actually be that much of a stretch. Uh, Max Vosov, thank you very much.